Scene Daddy interviews. Welcome everyone to Scene Daddy interviews. My name is Ian, and this is very cool. Right now via Skype, I have some of the guys. From Lotus Eater, we've got Jamie, Doug, and Cam. Guys, how are you doing tonight? Very well, hello. Super well, yeah. yeah. How are you? Not too bad at all. I mean, I'm sure you guys get this a lot, but being able to do this while you guys are in the UK right now and have a connection that sounds this good is actually pretty incredible. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm super <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, uh, it makes for a nice interview and podcast. For sure. Can, a nice, clear voice. That's true. You can find, you can find Apple for that. Yeah, there you go. Or whatever internet provider we have. <laughs> exactly. So where are you guys right now in the UK? You guys are kind of, you're about to start the tour with Make Them Suffer, right? Yeah, that's true. We're, we're all in Glasgow right now, um, getting ready to leave for a headline show in a place called Cheltenham. Sure. Um, which is near, near Bristol, if you know where that is. Mm-hmm. And uh, we play that tomorrow. And it's kind of, we played two warm-up shows ready for um, the Make Them Suffer run, and we l- the last show we played was in Dundee. Yeah. Um, so we've just been getting ready w- with the new set, just seeing how how it vibes with with the crowd and stuff. And yeah, it's been it's been going good. We we can't wait to play that those Make Them Suffer shows. Um, the the show with Bring the Horizon as well. Yeah. Um, that should be mental. Also, the headline with Modern Era. And yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Indeed. For for this tour, for what you guys are doing, are you guys actually going to be playing Social Hazard front to back? Yeah, full, yes, full, full front to back. Not quite in the order of Social Hazard, I don't believe, but yeah. Wow. Yeah, we 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 wanted Social Hazard to. We, we it's our best material out of everything we have. We feel so. We thought it's going to have to be played in full. So, it's not, it's well it. Yeah, it's it's too it's too short. It's I don't know. It's it's long enough for it to be able to be played in full, but not not too too long for it to kind of drag on, which which is cool. So sure. we've got we've got the the full EP and then some some of our favourites of the old EP and then the singles and yeah, it's it's a really cool set. It's it's a vibe for sure. We love playing it. Very cool. Yeah, that's actually something that a lot of bands don't get to do to go right out. You know, it came out earlier this year to be able to just go forward and play all of that has got to be pretty cool. So yeah, tell me, I mean, obviously it was going to come up a little bit later, but for All Points East, you're playing on that huge, huge bill. Bring Me's there, While She Sleeps as well, and I think Sleeping yeah, with Architects. Siren. Yeah, Architects as well. Yeah, yeah. What's it like for you guys to be able to play on that same stage? It's just... I, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't ever see the day coming. Yeah. <laughs> it just it caught me off guard, actually. Yeah, we got it, and we, we were just sat at our computers like, no, nah, this isn't... This isn't real. This is not a thing that we thought would be playing in such a short space of time. Like we've only been a band for two, two and a bit years, and right. to be able to be able to play with, to be able to play bands with, with yeah, bands that have influenced our musical creations is is crazy. Yeah, yeah. To be able to uh, to be on the same stage as Architects is is something that's crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any? <laughs> I'm sure you can't really go into it that much, but do you have anything special that you're going to try and bring to the stage? Because you're all, you're obviously a much different band than a lot of bands that will be there as well. Yeah, the the thing that separates us, I feel, from a lot of people is is how we all look as as a group. Like we don't look like we fit with each other, but it just <laughs> works. We like it's it's it just doesn't work, but works at the same time. It's it's weird, and we we, we have some things planned. Um, just with just ha- musical arrangements, shall we say? Okay. Um, that are gonna ho- we, we we don't know yet, but we'll see if it if if those will come to fruition. Um, but we're we're looking we're looking forward to just bringing Social Hazard to the big stage for the first time. Right. It'll be our it's gonna be our biggest biggest show ever. Wow. So it's it's gonna it's gonna be cool to see some of the drops, some of the the choruses, how good they feel on 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 a large stage. Yeah, I, I guess one of the things you're probably looking forward to most, or maybe even dreading, who knows, is when you're <laughs> on that stage doing this, seeing how the crowd themselves react to it and seeing how it actually flows out there to everybody. 
Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, I don't know whether I'm excited or scared, but I think <laughs> it'll be a mix of both when I'm kind of looking out from maybe the back of the stage walking on. Right. It'll be a different sort of experience. And even just a wider stage makes such a big difference. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just being around, like, being able to see people's faces as they see us for the first time, because that's I think that's going to be the case for a lot mm -hmm. of people. They're going to turn up for architects and bring me while she sleeps. And and then they'll they'll see us and they'll be like, hopefully they'll be like, whoa, what is this? Like, that's that's what we that's what we try to do at every show we try to grab everyone's attention in from the get-go just right. that's that's the vibe for us and we 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 hope people are scared to watch us scared <laughs> in a good way shall we say scared enough to be able to want to just get involved i want them to go what the fuck but yeah. in the best way yeah yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's like just and I know, personally, I know everything, all the songs that work on the big stage, we wrote Social Hazard, some parts to to be able to be played on a bigger platform mm -hmm. if that happened. Um, and so there's some parts I'm going to really enjoy seeing, just seeing how, how it reacts, how people react to it. Playing sure. outside as well on an open-air stage would be that's, that's slightly different for us as well. We've not done many of them before, right. so I'm excited to be playing out in the open, yeah. in the sunlight. Exactly that. Hopefully it's sunny. Don't want it raining, but that, I think that would work with the glue it aspects would. and stuff. Yeah. That would be cool. But yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. And I think you have Camden Rocks Festival coming up later as well. Will that also be an outdoor setting? Uh, no, that's the Underworld in in London, which ah. is inside. Um, okay, but it's but it's that's a, a venue we've wanted to play for ages. Oh wow. Um, we, we, we're actually. We're actually going to play that event. It's like one of those venues. If you play, it's like bucket list. yeah, bucket list venue. Oh, very. It's cool. like it's like Chain Reaction in in uh, Anaheim. Sure. One, one of those. One of those. But it's I forgot the word for it. Uh, it's just one of those things. You you, small you achievement have, for a moment. yeah, small achievement to to be able to play. Sure. And um and the fact we we get to do that is cool. We 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 were supposed to play it with uh, Blood Youth. Yeah, yeah was, we we're getting like work done on the venue or something. Yeah, so it's cool that we got to have another chance to do it. Very cool. And on that day, we're also, we're playing two shows. Uh, we ah. start our tour with Modern Era the same day as we play that show. Wow. Um, so we play early in the afternoon, then drive and play show at night, headline thing. So yeah, we we stay busy. <laughs> yes, you guys stay very busy. And I'm assuming, even though you haven't been Lotus Eater for that long, really, but you've probably done two sets in a day before this probably isn't something completely new for you guys no we've done that as lotus here yeah <laughs> before <laughs> yeah so it's uh it's something we the first time we did it it was knackering like I, I think first time we did it we were playing with um yeah it was whole ho our hollow our home ah. and then we played headline show so it was southampton to cardiff but we we didn't play in the afternoon it was like we played almost like four o'clock we had to drive to play a show at like nine yeah, wow we just made it in time for us so. yeah we were like in the van just like <laughs> oh no we're gonna miss this oh uh, but we didn't we didn't break any rules driving so don't worry about that police <laughs> don't. don't have to put us in jail but it's fine we uh we made it and we're doing it again we'll continue to do it. we'll continue to play anywhere because everyone needs to to see lotus eat alive right because it's uh it's something we put so much effort into and it's a good good experience, I feel. Scary, good, yeah. shall we say. Absolutely. So when you guys have to do that kind of thing, is there anything you have to prep for? Like, especially I'm thinking vocals, I'm thinking, you know, strengthen your hands for guitar and drums. Like, is there anything you guys have to get ready for when you have to play two times a night? I think I just need to, for myself, warm up more, longer. And I think I'm sound, to be honest with you. Yeah, okay. for, for me, I've, I've had problems with uh, tennis elbow. It's yeah, it's been something that I've had to deal with for a while, um, and I have to just warm up and I have to just get through it. Basically, right? It's not it's not easy. <laughs> um, so for the for the meantime, I'm in pain while I'm playing, but oh. I guess that that makes for a good a good atmosphere because I'm just screaming at everything. No pain, no gain. <laughs> no pain, no gain. Shall we say? It, hopefully it'll go, but if it doesn't, I'll just still continue to play and just. I guess people will be scared if I'm going to die some on stage from the noises I make. <laughs> but... until your arms fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but until I turn to jelly. But um, yeah, it's just how it is. But yeah, it's uh, we just have to mentally prepare for two shows. Exactly. Because our set's quite 
I don't know. It's it it it, it never stops. We, okay. No breaks. We we could easily have a song, have a huge gap, talk about this and that, yeah, and then make it into a thirty minute set or forty minutes. But we we choose to just give you everything in full straight away, in and out. And yeah, that that's just how it works with the music. We write short songs mm-hmm. just because we enjoy putting loads straight away into into the song. Right. Give you the riffs and and walk away wanting more, you know? Yeah. And right, right. Uh, and yeah, that's what we do. It's just it's good. Yeah. You know, I, we all enjoy doing this. Cool. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I know the the perception that you put out there with Lotus Eater is it's that gloom thing. It's hey, you know, it's the scariness, it's the hauntingness, it's like almost like a lifestyle. And you talk about doing that on stage, but that is the perception that people have. So as long as you're able to cultivate that perception throughout, you're all good. Yeah, that's exactly exactly what we do. I think we try to do that. We try to bring our vibe onto the stage as well. Mm-hmm. We this we like to replicate the same ideas on all platforms, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. For sure. That's very true. We try to keep everything the same um, and have a just an equal equilibrium with everything we do, which is a uh, yeah, it's 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 one of those where we just the vibe has to be has to be shown from everything to be able to give the crowd the lowest of vibe. Yes, because that that vibe is uh, important. important. The vibe important, is yeah. it. The vibe is what you feel. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. feeling is is something we we bring to our bring to a live show. That's if you don't feel anything from our set, then I don't think you're alive. Or we've, or we've <laughs> not done our job right. Oh, we've not done our job right. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're deaf. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But you can feel stuff with being deaf, so I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you can get what, I don't know. Feel uh, vibrations. Feel vibrations, yes. There you Good go. Vibrations. Yeah. Right. Having that vibe that you guys are talking about. So I've, I've talked to other bands about this on the show before. One specifically, if you know the band Sentinels. Yeah. I've heard of them, yeah. You know, they've got that really potent anger in their music it's something that you Mm -hmm. guys have as well and when i was talking to joe about what he does i'm like are you an angry person all the time or is it something you have to get ready for when you get on stage i want to kind of pose the same thing to you guys do you guys have to get in that specific mindset before you go on stage or does it just come naturally to me it's as if um as soon as everything starts and it's like right that's the state it started it's as if something in my brain just switches and i turn into it's as if when the backing track's done done it's also turning me into something as well ah okay yes yeah, it's, it's like the the anger the anger that is in our music is deep within us mm-hmm. and when that click track for me when the backing track starts for everyone it just brings it out the the angle we feel like the the music we create isn't something we're just doing for the sake of it like oh we, we're just these people who just want to write heavy songs, uh, write angry songs mm-hmm. for the money. That's right. not the case. But the things we're talking about, we're angry about, we're sad about. We feel we have to write about them to get to get away from that feeling to to help the feeling go. You know what I mean? And and mm-hmm. when we're on stage, the feeling comes back, and it kind of it's cathartic in a way right. for a lot of us, which is which is good. It's not n- nothing we do is is fake. No. If uh, it's all feelings we've all felt, and it's not just yeah it's not a fake we're not a fake band right oh no i i don't think you've ever cultivated that kind of perception of where anyone would think what you're doing is fake that's for sure yeah because because that can happen sometimes it's true some some people can just do things for the sake of the money i i I can't think of anything right now but it's yeah it it, it is something that happens but we we don't right we don't do that no no for sure so when you're done on stage how long does it take you guys to kind of get back into that regular kind of feeling where you can go to the Mertz table and talk to people? I feel like I come straight off the of stage and I just don't want to talk to anyone and I just want to get all my stuff off and just stand for a minute. Yeah. And then I'm inst- and then I'm like, right, that's that done with. Let's move on to the next part of the day, part of the gig. <laughs> yeah, because that it, it does take it does take it out here. It does take it. Out. Yeah. Like twenty five minutes of constant we yo in your face. It's it, it takes a lot out of you right. but big man Jamie over here he has to go straight to the merch table or sweaty right the, the first thing I say as soon as I finish is I am sweating each <laughs> time and then I need to go and shake hands take pictures when I'm sweating like a fucking dog <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so I guess no sleep for the wicked with Jamie over here. Exactly. <laughs> it's good though. Yeah. But yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't change this for the world right. at all. Your music is getting through to people and they want to come and they want to talk about their experiences and everything they've gone through similar, hope, well, maybe not completely similar, but you're hitting them on that same vibe. Yeah, it's that is very true. We've had multiple people come up to us and say our music's impacted them which we never thought would happen. We're just writing about our feelings individually. Mm -hmm. People have gotten tattoos because of yeah, some of our words. Nice. Which is which is cool and it's something we'd never thought would happen. But that's what music's about. Is it's it's just about re like ev everyone understanding e each other and just n never being above anyone. Like we're right. we're never above a anyone. We're we're just normal people playing music to help other people out. That's that's the case. We're not in it for the money. If we were in it for the money, we wouldn't be playing the music we're playing. Right. You know. Right. <laughs> uh, this, 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 this music is going to make us money in a way which is fair and for the people, not for ourselves. Right. Um, so yeah, that's how I see it. If we make it, then we've done it for everyone. I don't care if I never see a penny as long as I can play it. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, look. I hope that you also make money doing what you're doing right now so exactly let's at least let's at least put that out there so yeah. one thing when you talk about you know doing the type of music that you do would you ever do a cover you know how especially in the scene right now a lot of people and it's been for years a lot of people they take pop songs or they take other songs that you know have influenced them in their careers and they do cover songs of them and they make them metal or whatever style that they've been working on would you ever do that? Would we get a gloom metal cover <laughs> of something poppy? Well, I I think it, it like down the line, years down the line, potentially. But I would think if we were to do something, this is just an idea mostly, that it wouldn't particularly be a pop song, but maybe some song that we just enjoy right. in another genre that's I'm not really necessarily really pop goes punk, you know what I mean? But it might right, be right. like Aphex Twin goes even heavier or something, yeah. or something strange like that. But we played blind at a show with Net Deep uh, for Halloween, and I was cool. I I like that. Um, that would be really so, cool. So we've done one cover live, so you never know what will happen recorded, you know. Okay. But I feel, I feel like there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of songs that we could do well as a as a cover. I feel, but we for now we're just making Lotus Eater for Lotus Eater, you know. Exactly. That type of like, yeah. Just had to throw it out there. So yeah. You know, we're going to switch gears a little bit here. But one of the things I heard, you know, when we were setting all this up was that right now you guys are actually together not only to, you know, get ready for this tour, but that you're also writing for the follow up to Social Hazard. Is that true? That is. Yes, it is true. OK. Um, are. Yeah, we're, we're all together. We are. Yeah, we're currently writing. We're just writing to see what happens. Nothing sure. specific. Yeah, it's uh, we're writing for something. But we can't can't say. Well, right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but we are writing a follow up for whatever whatever we'll follow, and it's it's gonna be the best thing that has hit the uh, internet or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just gonna say that just so we have to write something good. You know? Exactly. Yeah, because I'm going to play this back for a lot of people, so <laughs> yeah. it's, it's good to know that. So the reason why I brought it up was not to get necessarily anything inside or anything. One of the things I really like to explore when I'm talking to a band that I really enjoy is obviously you've done your self-titled, you've done Social Hazard, you've written the singles in between, and now you know, you're working on something new. Has the way you've written, has that changed over the years for you guys? Oh, it has dramatically, shall yeah, we say. Yeah, not even just from the start of early, but from before that. Yeah. yeah it's just always changed. So we... It's changing just now, it's constantly changing. So gear wise, it's changed. Um, writing, songwriting wise, it's changed. We've in in the three well close to three years we've been a band. We've learned so much about production, songwriting, right. um, just from our peers being around our producer, um, being around uh, like different creatives. It's it's made us better songwriters, better musicians um i've felt myself become better at guitar in the last like two years from ah. being in low seater and like pushing myself to it so very nice yeah S same with myself for recording so mm -hmm. what what the the ellie songwriting process it starts with a riff um from doug okay then i put my drums over it 
and then we build that into into a song from riff um transition riff transition Mm -hmm. chorus maybe transition uh breakdown that's 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 how it works and then we add vocals on top of that okay um so it's just that's just the vibe we 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 keep and it's we, we didn't have that at the beginning because we, we didn't really know what, what we were, what we did. We didn't have the gear, but now we have monitors, we have yeah. um, pods, we have software, we have programmed drums, all that type of thing. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the quality of recording and demos has risen dramatically for sure. It's amazing how much you learn just being in the scene for like a few years and mm-hmm. recording songs and going to gigs and just being a band, you learn so much about just how to get better and gear and technology and things. Right. Mad. Would you say then for being in the scene and being around all these different bands and different venues and people that you've worked with, would you say the thing that's been most affected then or influenced in your music would be the sound and the way that you record and the gear and everything? Or would you say also the style that you're working with as well? Right, the style opens up a lot a lot of opportunities for even like the type of people you meet or even mm-hmm. the kind of gigs you play and type of instruments and pedals you use things like that so it's not it doesn't limit itself to one sort of genre's accessories if that makes sense right yeah the um the the style we write is definitely the synth the synthesis and the synths used in our music is definitely based on just the movies we watch we watch a lot of horror films sure. we we listen to a lot of um, horror scores and things like that, uh, movie scores, and we, and that was something we didn't used to do. Um, huh. Yeah, and and from our first when we recorded the the self titled EP, we, we we saw that the the need for synthesis uh, and the different type of synths was 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 high because we didn't used to have those in our demos, mm-hmm. and then we realized okay, we need to start getting better at writing synths using different softwares vsts all that type of thing right. um and we just delved, delved into it we we all started listening to it to different types of music and it, it's helped for sure the the fact that we just don't listen to metal we listen to to trap we listen to pop we listen to bands like citizen stuff like that it's sure. it just it just creates this sound that is unlike anyone else i feel right now anyway yep. um unless someone else comes and does what what we're attempting to do in our heads um but yeah the, the next the future releases all that type of stuff will it's going to be completely different we're not we're not a band to to not break the mold we're going to break anything we can we can think of <laughs> right. you know if we wanted to if you wanted to have a piano in in before a breakdown if you wanted to have I don't know a bagpipe, or whatever. If you chose to, <laughs> you know, we'll do it because we'll make it work. Right. If if it if it takes us months to do it, we'll do it. You know, and the the grind is always there in in our writing, and you could probably tell from how the transitions that we have, the riffs we have, wouldn't work if you didn't put if you if you didn't think about it before, and if you if you right. didn't have months of will this fit, will this fit, will this fit? You know, exactly. we had like close to 100 riffs or something for, for Social Hazard that we we were just like, okay, w- w- there's so many here, we need to figure out how we're going to fit them all in. Right. Um, and we also, we had more songs written and we just cut them because we, we didn't feel that they were good enough. Ah. Um, so that le- that level of choosing what's right is is so high, it, all, it makes us mad sometimes because <laughs> <laughs> a riff could be good, yeah. but then we feel like we could make a riff better and then better, and then better, and, and un- I set really high standards of myself when I'm writing riffs sometimes as well. Yeah, it just happens. I don't mean it. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm I'm telling Doug like, yo, this riff's good, and then Doug goes, nah, I need something better. <laughs> then you write something better, and then I go, oh, you can do better. And it's just um, <laughs> so if if you didn't know, it's me and Doug who write, yeah, uh, who, who write the music. Um, so that's yeah, that's just how it goes, and we want to we want to like fight each other all the time, but. You know, it's good for the music. Right. And going to song choices as well, you also didn't include Branded or Break It on Social Hazard. Was that yeah. because you didn't feel it fit with the tone or you were just, you just knew that they were better at that time? Yeah. 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 So, no, I think we've probably got many reasons we didn't put them on. I'm just thinking I wanted the whole Social Hazard thing to be totally fresh and something new. Right. 
okay. and not bringing back any of the old vibe, even though we still appreciate and we like the old songs. Yeah. I just like Social Hazard being its own entity and its own kind of piece of art and work. For sure. Yeah, it's because we, I don't think anyone knows that we had branded and break it for probably two years before we signed to uh, Hope Plus. Ah. I don't, probably not two years, probably a year, sorry. Okay. Close to a year. So we, we had those two songs, recorded them, and they were a way of, we were shipping them out to labels and things to be like, okay, this is what we, this is what we are and we want to sign to your label. Right. Um, so it took us a while to get those songs out and we've had them for ages, we've played them for ages. <laughs> yeah, we, we, well, we had Brandon out before we signed because what, what the case was, we almost didn't have enough music um, out there and ah. the, the wait was getting a little too long. Um, so what we did was we just released Branded and let and let Break It do the, do the work we need to do label-wise. And luckily that choice um, helped us out because we signed to Hopeless. But right. it, um, yeah, it was it, it was a good decision from us, I feel, um, to not have it on Social Hazard because we've had, we just wanted it to, as Doug said, have just have it as one new vibe, um, in its own body of work. And then let the others live in that the time frame they had. Yeah, they were true to their own times. Yeah, right. they were suited where they, where they came up. We'll always move forward. We'll, we, we're never looking back. We will we will look back in in certain cases, but mm -hmm. we're always looking for new ideas, um, new, new ways of of being in a band. Right. Still early days, I think. Yeah. Still early days, but we 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 just we're always thinking forward with everything we do. For sure. And I think one of the things that I definitely wanted to hit on, one of the things that I enjoy about Social Hazard is that, you know, especially talking about how much you put in to the work that you're doing, you're not one of those bands that just throws in the synth. You're not just throwing in the keys. You talk about, you know, really enjoying those scores from horror movies and from movies in general. And you really hear that come out in Social Hazard. So one of the things I wanted to ask was, you talk about having all the music ready to go before you put lyrics down. Do you also have that all ready to go? Or do you wait until the very end and decide specific instances of where you want something to really hit out of nowhere in that synth key range? Okay, so ly lyric-wise, lyric the lyrics are all written so that one song gets written, then I do lyrics, then another song lyrics, another song lyrics. Okay. Um, and then we base we base the lyrics off of the, the, the atmosphere we, we're feeling at the time. And then the simps are also are based around the riffs as well. So if say if a riff was minor and, and dirty, shall we say, mm -hmm. we'll find, we'll find a, a riff. Oh no, no, we'll find the simp that is dirty and minor and, and work around that. And then if, if we have a, a we, 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 if we want to bring melody in in a, a a major way, a happy happy tonality, we'll then find a synth that accompanies that. Ah. Um, so everything works works with each other. It's not like we have a riff, then we put just any any old synth in. It, it, exactly. Ev everything is thought out in 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 a meticulous way. It, we we go crazy when we write. Yeah, there's a kind of like moderate. Well, they have to moderate the synths into what ones are best, that sort of thing. Right. And I think we really put a lot of effort into the small details mm -hmm. between maybe like transitions and things like that, or like just backing track. We like the small details for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. If you listen to our backing track, it's it's crazy. It's also it it, it could be released on its own, you know, because it's just yeah, it's it. Really, it's, it's such an important part. Yeah, it's such an important. We we can't play without a backing track, you know. But right. it's not like we can't we can't play the parts. It's it's a part of us. The backing track is Ellie in in a sense. Yeah, um, for sure. And we in the future we will we'll probably have bring in a person who is the backing track, and it's not through the PA. It's through someone yeah. playing it. Ah, so that's for the future, and that's down the line. This is us thinking all the time something new, something new. Um, kind of like Vane have in Code Orange sure. with yeah, the yeah. person who plays plays the stuff. Right. Um, but we right. just yeah, I can't believe it. it's hard not to copy that. Someone's got to do it. You know yeah, what I mean? for if sure. It's a thing that somebody has to control. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's like it's, it's not, not copying. It's as in it. We want someone to play it in on the keyboard, like the hundreds of bands that have that. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, and that's yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking, and that's why I brought it up because you know we don't have to name any bands here, but there are a lot of bands in the scene that they just seem to throw in 
those synths, you know, they just throw in, it's like, hey, we need something that makes it sound like EDM here. Hmm. With yours, you can definitely tell that it's meticulous, that it's there for a reason. I think there's a whole world of music you can make digitally now, and as people are not, like, using that to their the best of their abilities, they find, like, the first synth you can get is, like, on a song, but there's a whole different kind of music yep. writing digitally. There's only so much you can do is just play with guitars, drums, bass, and vocals, you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's a whole internet full of it. It's because if if you if you think about Thug, the first song off Social Hazard, yep. the intro is not just synths. It's the three me, Doug, and Jamie screaming into a mic, doing any weird noise we could, ah. and affected and affected that to make it sound like to make it sound like that. That, that. Those are the little things that we put in, right. into into the tracks to to be like, okay, when we when we have to talk about it, when we speak about it, we can then be like, we just didn't add a synth. We did this thing that was extra to the simp right um to give a, a wider spectrum to give more of a vibe something interesting yeah something more interesting really than just a regular sign simp you know for sure no no absolutely so before we move on from that you mentioned being you know big horror movie fans i'm a huge horror movie fan myself as well i kind of hold them to a higher standard than i do other things so i'm just wondering do you have any recommendations of any films you guys have seen recently that you really enjoyed? My favourite horror movie, I, can't, I think it came out last year, yeah, it definitely came out last year, uh, called Hereditary. Oh, I, yeah. I can't stop sure. thinking about it, I love that film. Yeah. The soundtrack to that thing. Um, for me, just because of the soundtrack is all the Insidious movies, I know they might not be the, the best, but sure. the music for them is sick. And Sinister as well. But oh, yeah, yeah. They, um, I was in the cinema watching those, and as soon as that like violin was like, came in, I instantly was like, okay, I am not going to have a good time, and I like that feeling. <laughs> I'm a fan of like old school things like Jaws or The Shining. That, ah, sure. That sort of stuff. Like even the visuals and that sort of stuff mm-hmm. are really good. Yeah, The Shining's, the Shining's amazing. Very, very good. Very cool. No, no, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Stephen King. I actually have tattoos oh, yeah. for you know for a lot of his work, so no, I, yeah. I very much appreciate all of that. So that's one of the things that it latched on for me with Lotus Eater and with Social Hazard was hearing all that intricacy I really, really appreciate that. So that's very cool. So yeah, I really wanted to talk about the track Freak. Yes. I like that on multiple levels. One is, you know, I had read before that it has a little bit to do with bullying, but then, and I've had to deal with that most of my life. And I appreciate, you know, when someone's willing to, you know, spill their soul talking about that. But one of the things I also took from it was kind of almost thinking that a lot of the world right now is the same. That a lot of people seem to be copying, you know, I'm just going to be like this person. Where did all the uniqueness go in, you know, culture, in the world, with people, the way they act? And I've always been one of those people that's in favor of the weird, of the strange, of the unique, of the freak. And that's why I really enjoyed the song. I'm just wondering where your heads were at when you were writing that. So for Social Hazard, I I wrote the lyrics for the the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And and what happened was we, we accompanied everyone's each member of the band's feeling that they want to speak about um and freak was about a member of the band being annoyed at, at what you said that ev- everyone has this not everyone but a lot of people decided to just go the norm yeah uh, and just be pushed boundaries and just always being oh i've got a copy of this this person on instagram because this person is is huge and I have to do the same or have to look like this person have to look like this person like the right. fact that there's there's billboards everywhere just telling you how to look of how to be of how to express yourself and 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 I was like no this is not right, right. um and I felt like I, we, we had to write a song about it I think we're all really individual people and none of us are the kind of people that would try and copy someone else's style we really love like our, having our kind of own individuality and that's mm-hmm. suppose that goes, goes towards Freak's lyrics as well yeah it's Freak is is one of those songs that you just it's straight to the point and it had to be because this this situation where everyone just copies and all Instagram posts the same or Facebook posts the same um, even just as people walk in the street you just look and you're like you can't tell you, can, you can't tell the difference between people right. because that's just it's it's people have become so accustomed to wanting to just copy and Lotus Eater is 
just the far from that like we do everything the not the wrong way but the way that someone else wouldn't do it yeah. because it just has to be done and we call that originality yes <laughs> right there you go <laughs> well no i appreciate exactly yeah i appreciate you guys going through that a little bit because that's exactly how i felt as well so let me ask you just I used to live in England for a while. I was an Air Force brat. I've been to Scotland, but only very briefly when I was young and don't remember a whole lot about it. Are those same issues in Scotland and Glasgow, are they the same there as they might be in the States where it just seems like everything's becoming the norm? There's no standouts anymore. You know, like all the old restaurants and bars are getting torn down to be big time condos or parking lots. Are you guys dealing with that in your hometowns as well? I feel yeah, I feel like everything's moving really quickly and the kind of population can't keep up with how industrialized things are and the climate change and all that stuff. Everything's yeah. moving really quickly and no one's there to keep up with it. Right. But I feel like Glasgow's one of those countries that is I suppose in some way suffering from it harder than others. But yeah, there's just there's I'm I'm from Manchester and Manchester is has always been a, a growing city. Sure. Um for sure. And every and you just walk walk around and there's derelict buildings everywhere um, because the the people who, who own those buildings couldn't keep up with the McDonald's, the KFC, the all the the giants, industrial giants, food wise or whatever. I don't know right. who, who else you could say like Primark or whatever in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, they they just take over to and they don't allow for smaller companies to be able to grow they just take they just destroy them or buy them and, and just make them into what what they want to be right. kind of sounds like people are robots and this yeah. society is uh changing you into a robot maybe yeah right. no, absolutely. not the robots or any of our themes but i just had a thought about <laughs> everyone <laughs> right following the rules of what they're given by the government and things yeah. exactly yeah and even your social media is run or it seems to be run a lot differently than a lot of other social medias. It's almost like, I, I don't know if you guys were trying for this, maybe you were, it sounds like almost propaganda, the way things are typed out on Facebook and Twitter. Were you guys going for that kind of feeling? Yeah, definitely. I think we take that really seriously. I think our, like, our like, social medias and things, we like it to be professional and straight to the point and informative right. and uh, no messing about on it, really. Like it was in, in the war, like it's just straight, You've got to tell them how it is, yep. and you, and you're gonna. It's almost a, the dictionary. I don't know. It's just, almost you reading it like you would in a dictionary, right? And that's and that's how we want it to be. We don't want it to have any other outcomes. You, you know straight away what it means. And in some in some posts, you can be like, oh, this might mean this, or this might mean this. Um, but it, we, at, at all our posts, all our posts, we we try and make people think about what's what's happening instead of going, okay. We're playing here. You could maybe come and see us. You can maybe pay. Maybe don't know. With us, you have to come. Attendance is necessary. You have to come, right. or you're missing out, or some, or you, you, you know, or, or you're not doing things right. Right, shall we say? For sure. So that's uh, yeah, propaganda. It is. Yeah. Good propaganda, shall we? Say. Well, yeah, good propaganda. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is for sure. So I, I also have to ask this because you know, like I said, haven't been back to Scotland for a while. I'm only really familiar with two other Scottish bands that kind of hit here in the States. One is Aelstrom, who, you know, have been making their way around. I actually saw them on Warp Tour recently. And then one of my favorites, one of my all-time favorites, Yashin, who aren't around anymore. <laughs> Yashin. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the basis to Yashin was from our, like, hometown outside of Glasgow. So oh, we really? Them oh, okay. And stuff. Yeah. Yashin were around kind of before our time, I think we were. Right. Right, right. I was probably like 14, 13, 14 when Yashin were at the peak, but uh, we know them. And Bleed From Within was it, you said, as well? No, it no. was Ailstorm. Ail yeah, Ailstorm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ailstorm. But you know Bleed From Within as well then? Oh, Bleed From Within. Yes, sorry. Yeah. My, my apologies. They're all Glasgow as well. I suppose I'll add them in just because they're other boys. No, for sure. Ailstorm I've heard of. I've not really listened to. They're like pirates, so they're not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, not exactly the same, for sure. So, But I guess the question would be then, for you guys right now, what is the scene like there? But dead. <laughs> is it dead? Yeah, no. Glas Glasgow is not much going on. Not ah. not much going on. It's city of culture, but for music, it's just not. It's not a. Uh, it's not. It's not the best, but it's 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 growing. Shall we say it? It 
it ha- is getting better, but it's not what it used to be when I was like 16, 17 going yeah. to gigs and stuff. I think scenes must just go have a, like a peak in peaks and troughs, and Glasgow's probably at a kind of trough just now, but there are really good bands coming out of it. Oh, good. Okay. And and we're going to be that band that brings it back. Really. Yeah. And I'll say that. <laughs> there you go. Very nice. Yeah. I like that. So we're going to be wrapping up very soon, I think. But let me ask you this. this is something we didn't talk about when you talk about touring. Obviously, we've talked about how you're a relatively newer band. You're getting these really big chances, though, at these big festivals. You're going on these great tours. Is there a chance with your connection with Hopeless that you would be making it to the States or at least going even worldwide? Yeah. The States is a very, very big goal for us. That is something that will happen. Mm-hmm. Very, not, we, it, we do believe it will be. Yeah, team. I think it's inevitable, really. Yeah. But we, yeah, there's nothing set in stone. The next, whatever release we do, the States will be hit. Awesome. It's just we're, we're waiting for the right, the right offer, the right, the right tour for us to jump be in there. too quick and kind of ruin our first opportunity at going. Sure. Yeah, has to be perfect. Yeah. So when we're in the states, we'll be getting the best version of Lotus Yeah. Um, and that's what we want to. We 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 could go and and do something. I I don't know what we do, but we want to have the right moment to give Lotus Eater's first experience in in the US to be a, a very high level. Right. Which is and it's it's expensive to go to. Oh yeah. Yeah. To yeah. America, yeah, so you can't be. So we, jumping we, on some tour that can, we can't afford that sort of thing, we want to make sure it's all worth exactly worth its while and at the right time. Yeah. So uh, I'm I'm half American. My mum's from LA, so oh, okay. it's not expensive for me. <laughs> but L- like America has, when we go there, it has a a home with me in 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 a sense. So uh, I can have a hometown show in LA, shall we say? Because my mum's from there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, chain reaction. I want to play there so bad. Well, Anaheim, whatever. So ah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then. I think is is hopeless. Are they California based as well? I think so. Yeah, they are. So yeah, we'll, we can go to the headquarters there and and meet them. Well, we've, we've met some some uh, people from Hopeless, uh, Tobin, uh, Eric Tobin, in person. But yeah. it'll be good to meet um, everyone else who's who's worked who's worked with us. That'll be it's going to be a good time when um, when when Lotus Eater hits uh, hits America. Very nice. And yeah, I know. So everyone's mentioned, you know, the signing with Hopeless. How you know, you guys were the first UK band or heavy UK band in 25 years to sign with them. I think, at least from my outsider perspective, it seems like Hopeless was a great choice for you guys with how things are running right now. But I know a lot of people were kind of, you know, scratching their heads because Hopeless is such a different record company where there a lot of pop punk, a lot of, you know, like emo, you know, hard rock. And then you guys come along. Was there a lot of thought process? I'm sure you guys put a lot of thought into who you were going to sign with. But are you happy with your signing? You know now. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there were a few options. There were some more offers in from other labels and things like that. And we knew that the other labels might have sounded more fitting because they kind of had the heavier bands on it. But we chose deliberately the hopeless because we knew it would have that kind of standing out way right. in the way yeah. that we want to stand out while we're on stage and things like that. So we wanted that everything's about standing out and making yeah. sure that. So what's like the biggest way possible to stand out, not sign to the, the label yeah. you think you're going to sign to, sign to the one that's completely the wrong the wrong thing <laughs> to an outsider perspective. Sure. But but in, inside inside the label, it's it's great for us. We're enjoying it. Everyone exactly. is working. It, we, we, we don't feel like we're that band you've just signed to the label. We feel like we've been there for years, um, which is always good. So big up Hopeless. The, the, the best the best uh we could have asked for that's and awesome it's gonna and it's it's good for it's even better for us to to sign to american label because it's easier for us to get to america yeah, so yeah i like that kind of access that you have even already with american kind of contacts and things it's nice to yeah feel like we're crossing the prond already before we've even done it <laughs> there you go in the prawns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so it's we're uh we're we're enjoying Gloom worldwide coming to fruition and it actually being a thing because it is. We have fans all around the world, which right. is crazy for five guys from like Manchester and Glasgow. It's just in Kilmarnock, you know. It's it's a crazy, uh, a crazy <laughs> experience that we're having right now, and it's going to continue. We're, we're we're never stopping. We're going to be ninety years old playing Gloom still, yeah. and uh, that's good. That's how it's going to be, you know. I think a new tattoo idea for people, Gloom Worldwide. I think that would work yes. out very well for everybody. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's a tagline we've used for a while, and yeah. hopefully someone gets it. Or I, or I get it first. I'll get the first Gloomo I tag. Yeah. There you one. go. You heard it yes. here first. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, everyone. I think this is actually a perfect time to end here. So I'm very glad that I was able to get a chance to speak with you guys. Obviously, you've got the tour going on right now in the UK. You've got a bunch of stuff on the horizon. We're going to have links in the description of the episode so people can follow you on social media, find out where you guys are going to be, pick up merch, you know, obviously listen to Social Hazard and, you know, whenever anything else new comes out. But until then, what is the best way for people to support you guys? Best way is to come to any show you can. If you're not from the UK, we'll see you in the US soon. Can't tell you when, but it'll be a, a great time for everyone. Um, Hill Power, so his social media, Instagram. Yeah, give us a chance and just listen to the music. Take yeah. It in. Take it in. And, and enjoy everything we do and buy our merch, Big Cartel, Hopeless, Impericon, all those things, merch now. Just embrace the gloom, embrace everything we've, we've got because we're never stopping and you're going to you're gonna. You'll get... hear about us sooner or later, so you might as well start now. Yeah, might as well start now because <laughs> you're going to regret it in 10 years. Exactly. <laughs> Yep, that is the best way to do it. And that is why you guys are on this show is because I want more people to listen to what you guys are doing because I was blown away when I first heard you and I've really appreciated everything you guys have done. So thank you so much and thank you for taking the time because I know you guys are super busy. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Much appreciated. It's okay. No worries, man. Cheers. You've been listening to Scene Daddy Interviews. Thank you all for listening to Scene Daddy Interviews. Make sure you support the artists we featured by checking out the summary of the episode. Also, for all your scene news, reviews, and memes, make sure to follow Scene Daddy and Ian Hates on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget to subscribe and rate Scene Daddy interviews on your favorite podcast listening app for more great artist interviews in the future. Stay seen.